In this chapter we are going to talk about move orders. Move orders are very important in the opening. Well, it's quite typical. One would have a lot of information, let's say, about the, the main lines and the main position. But, well, it's often, often happened to me that I've missed some kind of detail about is it important that I play this move first or later in order to actually get to the position. So let's try and get really into the details of that. Okay, this DVD is about the move 9 bishop c4. But let's just understand what is the point of the move 9 bishop c4. Well, to illustrate that, why not just do long castle instead, one could argue. Well, then black would probably play the move d5. That's the main move and considered to be quite strong there. So actually, in this position, one could argue that black is threatening the move d5. Well, bishop c4 stopped that. Another move of the main lines is the move g4. Well, this stops d5, but just in a different way. Now you can respond to it with, with the move g5. So, well, if you want to sort of cut into the real basics, the move bishop c4, well, one of its main points is that simply it, it protects the d5 square and stops black advancing his pawn there. So, well, that is sort of a very, very basic point of the move bishop c4. Okay, after bishop c4, we're going to play the move bishop d7. Well, we're going to look at quite some, uh, you know, main lines in this in, in this DVD. But, uh, well, let's just understand, can white play h4 first, or is he going to uh, go long castle, or doesn't it matter? Well, let's have a look at the move h4. That's a very decent move. It's played uh, a lot of times. Well, generally, black will sort of respond with the move, well, either knight e5, or with the move rook c8, or with h5. And you will see a lot of games where they have, uh, well, played one of the three moves. And, uh, well, sometimes it doesn't matter, but actually I think there is quite some nuances here. Well, um, Anand played the move h4 against Kasparov in their World Championship match in um, in 1995, and Kasparov replied with the move h5. And I think actually, well, Kasparov had a very, very good point in playing exactly this move and not one of the other twos. Um, well, let's say had he played the move rook c8, <clears throat> then I think Kasparov's point was that he thought that Anand might actually take on on um, on c6 in this position. Well, he took on c6 in their game, but in a slightly different uh, version, which we will discuss later, where black took back with the pawn. But somehow taking back with the pawn he now here makes much, much less sense than the, the line we're going to see later. I think it's possible, of course, to take with the bishop or with the rook, but somehow Kasparov didn't really want to allow that, so that's why he didn't play the move rook c8. Well, why didn't he go knight e5 instead, you might ask. Well, okay, Anand will put the bishop to b3, and let's say then we play the move h5. Well, this actually happened in the game between Anand and Topalov in uh, in 1993. And there, Anand played the move bishop h6, swabbing the, the strong dragon bishop. And, well, probably Kasparov didn't want that either. And his point is that, well, with h5, in this position, well, Anand cannot play bishop h6 now, as the knight will will hang on d4. And, um, well, somehow, okay, Anand can always transpose back to the main lines, but Anand wanted to do something uh, uh, different. And like this, Kasparov is forcing it into the best version for him. So I think in this position, h5 is, is the, the the most exact move order. Okay, Anand played the move bishop to b3, and then Kasparov played rook c8. Well, again, should he play knight e5 here, then bishop h6, well, this is exactly Anand Topolov, as we just discussed. So Kasparov played the move rook c8. Well, long castle will be our main lines, but Anand had the idea that he wanted to take on c6, and now Kasparov has sort of forced his bishop to, to b3, which means here he can take back with the pawn. And, uh, well, this is quite a much more aggressive uh, continuation. Anand played bishop h6, and uh, I think, did Kasparov exchange? No, I think he just played the move c5 immediately. Yeah, he played c5. I think bishop to c4. Well, obviously, black is, is threatening to go forward. Well, okay, there's bishop a4, but still that would be quite unpleasant for white. So Anand went back to c4, and I think they played queen b6. Bishop takes g7, king takes g7, b3, and now the very nice move. Sorry, I'll just make it here. Bishop e6. And, well, Kasparov was actually almost already slightly better and went on to win a very, very nice game. But this is sort of 
Well, this is impressive preparation from Kasparov's side. He didn't only pay attention to the main lines, he even paid a lot of attention to, well, is it important you do long castle here, or if they do eights for, is there quite some nuances? And this, well, you'll see that a lot of on top level, especially a player like Kramnik will put a lot of attention into early move orders and such. Okay, this was h4. There I think it's most exact to respond with the move h5. What about the move long castle? Maybe there is some sort of nuances in that position. Let's let's speak a bit about that. Well, I would say here, I think the most exact move is rook c8 in this position. It's also possible to play the move knight to e5. But this actually gives uh, white an extra option. Then he can put the move to play the move bishop e2. Well, I agree, this might look weird, but the idea is that in this position after rook c8, white has the extra option of playing g4, and there's actually quite some strong players who have been doing that. Well, sort of you could argue, why can't he just do that with the bishop on b3? Well, um, okay, let's do the probably correct move order here. Rook c8, forcing the bishop back to b3, and now we're going to go knight e5. Well, h4, h5 is our main line. But let's say that black is going to play the move, sorry, white is going to play the move g4. Well, this was played in the game, for instance, between Polga and, uh, well, Judith Polga and Magnus Carlsen. And Carlsen replied with the move b5. And after g5, b4. I think he's already having a, a quite quite promising position. Well, the the game continued knight c2, knight to h5, and I think she can't really take the pawn on on um, on b4. Probably a5 is going to be a very strong, and the bishop will get sort of uh, in trouble. And I think she here she played the move f4, but after knight c4, I think Carlsen was already much better, and he went on to to win a very nice. Uh, nice and easy game in, in that sense. So, I mean, that's sort of basically, with the bishop on b3, the move g4 is basically premature due to b5. And sort of, in this position of a long castle, I think it's slightly more exact to play the move rook c8, simply to uh, uh, not allow this, um, um, this extra possibility in, in that sense. Well, I think this is basically the nuances in this, this uh, sort of about move orders. After h4, here, Play the move h5, and should they do long castle, well then do rook c rook c8 and not knight e5. I think if you know these details, you will not really get into trouble with sort of um, white trying some kind of small sideline tricks on you.